Now, one of the most important files you are going to be dealing with when you're using Python scripts is something known as a CSV, a comma separated value file, you know, big fancy $5 word structured text files. But the entire idea is if we remember the idea to something like a table, right? Well, all of these happen to be rows and these happen to be columns. And if I wanted to represent this as a list, I would take each one of these values and separate it via commas, not a semicolon, a comma. And then on the new line, I would put, you know, square brackets in another line. But once again, if we think about this from sort of the uh, I'm dealing with files that uh, or data that may be coming in uh, from outside of my program, uh, in the case of a file, it is more commonly going to be stored as a CSV file. And the entire idea here is now that we just take that same kind of concept. Each value is going to just sit on a line and then it's going to be separated by a comma. Nothing terribly outlandishly crazy going on this and we can see this in action. So uh, if we were to jump uh, to our data folder that I've been referencing and we see, oh, well, we've got a few CSV files in here. Let's take a look at the iris.csv. You'll see exactly that. There's uh, sort of this first row where we're just giving uh, something known as a header, uh, column headers indicating what each one of the columns represents. So the first values are the sepal links, the sepal widths, the uh, petal links, the petal widths, and then the species. And you can see that that's exactly what we're seeing in each one of these. So 5.1 is the sepal length, 3.5, 4.1, 0.2, setosa. So we're just storing things in a structured way. So with that in place, there are a few things that we can uh, deal with. So one of those is the fact that these are separated via something known as a delimiter. Now that delimiter could be anything. It doesn't have to be the comma because what happens if you happen to have a value? What happens if I want Boston, for example, to, I don't know why you would want this, but what if I wanted it to be Boston? Uh, well, in that case, you know, I don't want that to be two separate columns. So you could use a different uh, delimiter uh, as is. So in this case, I could use the pound sign or the hashtag for all the, the cool kids out there. Uh, but the entire idea would be that this is, again, just trying to represent that this is the separation of data. So with that in mind, can we process CSV files? Yes, we can. There happens to be a way to process them. So this is sort of the without magic uh, sort of way you can see you can go in and uh, open the file as is just like we've done before traverse it split it up uh, and instead of printing you could store that to an array and then you're done and you close out of it okay well that's one way to do it but there also happens to be something known as a csv library or csv module that will allow us to process uh, specifically CSV files. So how do we handle this? Well, the same kind of thing, just like we've seen in the past with most libraries, we would import that CSV library into our program just as is. And in our case, I'm going to go ahead and use something called file path. And I'm going to reference that CSV, uh, file, the Iris CSV file. Uh, and so I've loaded that into memory. Now, very similar. I'm going to open this up. Uh, and process it. So again, with open file path as phi. That part hasn't changed. We are still needing to open the file, but now we need to process it. Uh, and specifically, we need to process it via the CSV library. So to do this, I typically like to use the term reader, the, va the variable reader for this, because I'm, uh, I'm using uh, the reading uh, ability of the CSV library. 
And so what do I mean by that? Well, we go CSV. And just like when we are dealing with something like the math library or the, the random library, you know, you did random dot and then your function or math dot and your function, CSV dot reader. And in this case, we would pass in the file object, not the uh, string, but the file object that we're working off of. And so with this in mind, I now have a way to process that particular uh, file using this library. And so in this case, now that it's loaded into memory, it's processed, I can traverse it just like any other file. So for line in reader, uh, let me just print a line and then I'll break and what I'm doing here is just showing off sort of what's the first line going to look like. And you can see, oh, what do you know? It's already processed it as a string, or sorry, as a list. It's already taken all of those commas and separated them uh, as is. Okay, nice. If I were to continue on, so uh, let's say for example, Instead of printing line, I do, um, let me print line at two. Now what I'm saying is print the second, uh, the element at the two index. So zero, one, two, print the pedal length uh, values. And I take this, I run it, and that's exactly what we see. I see every single row and its respective value. Now if I do add in just a little bit, type for that line too, it is still processed as a string. It's not gonna magically turn this into a floating point number, but we happen to have variables or videos that show us how to convert these into floats. Or if you happen to know that this particular column is always going to be a floating point number, after the first line, you can do a little fancy processing. What I would do is I would come in first line equals true. And this is to indicate that I have not processed my first line yet. And again, this is because uh, this is strings. I don't want my, my code to crash off of this, but I'm using a conditional statement. Uh, so if first line, first line is going to equal false else. Now, specifically what this is doing is if I've hit the first line, right? Don't do anything else, just process, you know, just skip over it effectively. Then, print, well, let me, uh, val is going to equal float at line two, print val type val. And so once again, this should skip over to the first line. I'm never going to see pedal.length unless I want to do something on that first line. Convert after the first line, convert the value at line two uh, to a floating point number and then just print it out. And that's exactly what we see.